This is KGW News at Noon. All right, thanks to Nina. Welcome to the News at Noon here on KGW. I'm Dan Haggerty. I'm in for Brenda this afternoon. Some big news, of course, from the governor today announcing the first phase in Oregon's reopening. We want to send things over to Pat Doors. He's been listening in since the very beginning, has the details of the plan. Really big step moving forward here. I think everybody's been kind of waiting to hear this news conference. Pat, a lot of work to be done, but, you know, what's the update as of we know it now? Well, Dan, one of the biggest takeaways is that face masks are here to stay and going to become part of all of our lives. The governor is requiring that employees at grocery stores, pharmacies, public transportation, etc., must wear those. And they highly recommend that those places of employment require their customers to do it as well. There is also a recommendation that everyone is required to wear a mask in any public indoor area. And one of the other things is that starting next week, um, we'll get into the counties in a moment, but even without that, standalone retail is going to be able to open, child care is going to be able to open, and summer camps and youth programs, as long as there's enough distancing, that sort of thing. Now, what you were mentioning was the phase one where the counties across the state are going to apply to the governor's office to start to get things back towards normal. One of the things that would be allowed under phase one is an expansion of how many people can gather together in one place, up to 25. Here's what the governor had to say about that. Local gatherings can increase in size to 25, again, with physical distancing. Some counties will be able to move into this phase before others. Once in phase one, each county must remain for a minimum of 21 days so that we can monitor whether there's an unsafe uptick in the virus. If at that point, the county still meets the prerequisites and has not seen an increase in hospitalizations and emergency department admissions for COVID-like illness, then we will assess whether they are ready to move forward into the next phase. They haven't really detailed what uh, phase two would look like, although they say maybe some folks could go back to work in their offices. In the meantime, everybody's encouraged to continue telecommuting. And phase three had the bad news. That was the banning of all concerts, conventions, big public gatherings, including live in-person sporting events, banned until the end of September. So we'll see how that looks. I asked about what about college and high school football, and they said we'll take a look at that closer as we get closer to that. Also back on that phase one reopening, that means that restaurants, bars, personal, hair, um, personal services like barbers and uh, salons, also gyms would be allowed to reopen. So that's going to be a county by county situation. There's a number of metrics in that. If you want to see all the details, we've got those posted at KGW.com. Yeah, I think a lot of people were stunned by that phase three all the way through September before any large gatherings. I started thinking about high school football as well because, you know, they start practicing and stuff in August. So um, interesting, right. but let's see how phase one goes, goes first. It's nice to see a little bit of a timeline starting to move forward. Pat, thank you so much. So look, across yeah. the country, we've been talking about this shortage of personal protective equipment or PPE as we call it. Has doctors and nurses afraid for their safety? But, but soon these unassuming shipping containers here will be helping hospitals across across Oregon, uh, reusing their PPE and reusing it safely. Mike Benner shows us how they work. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't scared. Testimonials like that have become all too common since the coronavirus started spreading across the globe. Healthcare workers are deathly afraid of running out of those protective N95 masks. Well, guess what? Help is on the way. The goal uh, that, that the federal government has committed to is, is providing at least one for each state. Andrew Phelps is the director of the Oregon Office of Emergency Management. He says in just a matter of days on the U of O campus in Eugene, a system will be in place to decontaminate N95 masks. And we're talking a lot of masks. We expect to be able to remove about 80 to 85,000 of these masks through a day. Uh, so it's a pretty large number, especially since this is going to be a, a seven day a week operation. You're probably asking yourself, how does this work? Well, the system is made up of more than a half dozen shipping containers. The N95 masks are placed inside and a hydrogen peroxide vapor is pumped through, killing any and all germs on the masks. We can decontaminate them up to 20 times. So you get quite a, quite a few uses out of these masks. Uh, which is important given how limited our supply is of these N95s. 
This decontamination system was dreamed up by a couple in Ohio. The wife, who's a family doctor, was concerned about a mask shortage at her hospital, and she mentioned it to her husband. He works at Patel, a nonprofit research institute that tests for dangerous pathogens. He recalled an old study that showed masks could be cleaned and reused. The couple started drawing schematics. Testing followed, then came approval from the FDA. I still don't think it's fully sunk in yet. It's overwhelming to think that it started with an after-dinner conversation, drawing it out on a piece of paper and, and seeing if it was even feasible. And feasible it was. These decontamination units are firing up in states across the country, including Washington and here in Oregon. As Andrew Phelps points out, this aligns with Governor Kate Brown's reopening plan. Having the system to decontaminate masks and make more masks available for a longer period is really an important piece of that reopening strategy. Of course, this will not be cheap. We can tell you that the federal government is footing the bill as well as handling the logistics involved in moving these N95 masks between the decontamination unit in Eugene and hospitals and healthcare facilities across Oregon. I'm Mike Benner for KGW News.